Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the STEM Alliance Scientix and Screeware web webinar, The Influence of Arts in STEAM, How A Makes a Difference. This webinar is co-organized by the STEM Alliance, Scientix, and Screeware, and it is part of the STEM Discovery Campaign 2023. My name is Luigi Brisco, and I work for uh, European Schoolnet as a project support coordinator for the STEM Alliance. Every year, Scientix organizes uh, the STEM Discovery Campaign to inspire young people about uh, STEM subjects and careers, nurturing a capable and innovative workforce in Europe and uh, beyond. The 2023 STEM Discovery Campaign is a joint international initiative that invites educators, projects, organizations, schools, and all the interest stakeholders across Europe and the world to celebrate careers and studies in the field of science, technology, uh, engineering, and mathematics. The campaign uh, runs from the 1st of February to the 30th of April, 2023. We invite you to download the app from your smartphone uh, app store and go check the ongoing competition, participate to win the amazing awards and pin your activity on the map. Here in chat, you can find uh, a tutorial video on how to submit your activity. Together with us today in the room, we have my colleague Rocio Benitez, uh, Benito, who will uh, be supporting this webinar from a technical point of view. If you have any issue with your audio or connection, please do not hesitate to send us a message in the chat. Before uh, going through our agenda for today, uh, let me share some technical details. You will see that all the microphones and the cameras have been disabled. So if you have a question for our speaker, uh, you can just post them in the chat. We will also be sharing useful information and uh, links uh, with, your, uh, with you throughout the webinar. Please feel free to share your questions uh, in this chat and we will be collecting them and addressing them to the speaker at the end. After filling the signature list, and we will share the link for this in the chat, we will give the floor to our speaker, who will, who will talk about creative approaches and teaching uh, techniques in STEAM education. The objective of the webinar is to trace the influence of artistic concepts in education and distinguish their influence uh, on the formation of students' skill and personalities. Finally, you will be able to ask questions throughout this webinar and we will address them in the Q&A session. It is my pleasure now to welcome Viktor Bohdanov, our speaker for today. Viktor is an educational trainer specialized in implementation of STEAM approach in modern school with six years of teaching experience in public and private schools uh, currently working at Screeware. Victor, thank you so much uh, for being here with us, presenting and discussing today. The floor is all yours. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me again. It's a great pleasure, just as usual, to see you guys, to work with you. It's just always a great pleasure to see. You. And also, of course, big thank you to everyone who found the time to join our webinar today and to everyone who's interested in STEAM education. So today, uh, as it was mentioned, we are going to uh, we are going to uh, get a deeper insight on uh, different artistic concepts that lie behind STEAM, and see how it influences modern education with some particular examples and also with some general information. As it was also mentioned by Luigi, I have uh, six years of teaching experience uh, in public and uh, public schools, uh, private schools, and other educational establishments. And uh, my personal experience tells me and shows that STEAM education becomes very and very important nowadays. Uh, being a teacher is facing a lot of different techniques, a lot of different particular situations in the classroom that can be uh, solved in different way. And STEAM education provides a lot of opportunities, not only for uh, technological advancement of students and not only focusing on science uh, subjects, scientific subjects, but also on creativity as well. We are starting with introduction of the topic, STEAM education. I'm pretty sure that uh, all of us who gathered here today know, perfectly know what STEAM education is. 
science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. Uh, still, there are a lot more behind this, and there are a lot of other different concepts that can be and should be implemented in other different subjects using this very specific scientific educational concept. So uh, today we're going to focus on a quick revision of the STEAM concept in general, uh, then the general information about A in STEAM, how it makes a difference, a particular difference in educational uh, process. And, and then we'll have a couple of examples from American schools and from European schools on how different uh, curricula implement STEAM uh, educational concept live, so to say, in the classroom. Uh, and then the conclusion, we are going to try and figure out a couple of tips for the teachers uh, to make their STEAM, uh, STEAM lessons better. So a relatively new concept uh, started from 2006 and uh, researcher Georgia Tiaklan was the developer of this concept. I'm pretty sure that we know that. We should thank her for this, uh, for, for this beautiful idea to implement artistic uh, techniques in scientific subjects. So not only from the general perspective, but in the deeper, more uh, specialized way in the curriculum, in the teaching techniques and methods. And that's what makes the educational concept unique. And that's what makes it uh, effective. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bunch of STEM education, which has older origins, deeper origins, uh, but STEAM itself is uh, based on this STEM educational concept brings a lot of new things to it from the perspective of creativity. If you take STEM education, creativity is presented in the pure technological way. If we take STEM education, creativity is presented in a classic way, so to say, in a more generalized, uh, in a more generalized way. So let's face, face the truth, not each, not every student in our classroom will become a scientist, will become a chemist, uh, an engineer, but all of those young people will need those skills in order to face the challenges that they are going to have in the future. The challenges of the future labor market, the challenges of our social needs and preferences that have been forming for a couple, for 20 years now, I suppose, 20 years of the deadline for uh, STEAM education gives it all. And not only from the perspective of uh, educational material, so for example, we have we have scientific topic today that we need to cover. We do that. That's great. They have the necessary knowledge and skills, but not the whole set of social and soft skills that could be implemented afterward. So that's where STEM educational concept comes in hand. And uh, as, the as the research of uh, Georgia Tiakman showed, the implementation of these techniques proves very effective and STEM educational concept feels much more alive, so to say, with those creative techniques becoming STEAM. So when we're talking about arts, the whole, this letter, big letter A in general, the first thing that we think about, letter A, is the word arts, right? Uh, the, Dr. Jajat Yakman figured out five uh, very specific, but still general fields of arts and education. The first one is Fine arts, and I'm sure that there are a lot of teachers here present today. And please think now about one or two, uh, one or two ways you implemented uh, fine arts yourself in the classroom. A lot of opportunities here to do that, and I'm sure that we all did that one way or another. Uh, everything which is what is connected with graphic implementation on the paper or in a digital form can be considered to be as the branch of the fine art. Uh, when it comes uh, when it comes to the language arts, well, this is this is a bit different. It's quite a controversial topic. Now, STEAM education is is a science focused concept, of course, and linguistics is still there to come. So we are still working on how to implement STEAM for linguistics, and there are a couple of ways to do that. Uh, but language arts, let's say, is partially are, are partially connected with. Uh, with the scientific topics. So one question, one thing that sometimes pops up, for example, is the programming language, right? The semantic the linguistic term, language that we're using, English language, Polish language, any other language, and let's say, for example, C++, the programming languages. Can we consider those two 
linguistic and uh, self-independent semantic, semantic systems to be of the same origins, since we're using the first one for communication, and the second one for a very particular uh, technological reason for, for programming. <clears throat> well, technically, there are people who say that they can be considered as being of the same origin and people that are not. I don't think that they don't. I don't think that there is an answer to this question, but since there is a system of terms and system of different linguistic patterns that are used for very specific purposes in different ways, why should not we consider, for example, core programming language to be a self-independent linguistic structure? And other way around, why can't we consider a traditional language to be a more uh, a more practical and technological implement, let's say, a tool for an implementation of something? For example, we can use different linguistic uh, structures for programming, not only C++, but I don't know, make it a very simplified, like block programming, for example, with the simple, uh, with, with the simple, um, you know, Blocks of comments, not without going deeper into the code. So this is a different thing, and but still, language arts is somewhere around still educational concept, you know, concept, and it always it was always like that. Well, uh, physical arts is a, the answer, I suppose, is very strict. And let's also think about one or two ways that we implemented some kind of physical activities during our lessons, uh, games, any other physical activities, outdoors, field trips trips and so on. Uh, can it be implemented in STEAM education? Yes, it can. And does it have a very specific educational purpose? Well, this is that, that depends on the creativity of the teacher. Um, when it comes to manual arts, well, it's basically everything that we connected with our manual skills, creating sculptures, creating everything, everything that we do with our hands. And this is a very important and very, very interesting topic uh, to have. When we have, when we are discussing STEM education, well, liberal arts is very is very vague and very wide uh, has a very wide range of uh, ways to put, uh, apply it. Philosophy, ethics, morals, history, humanities, everything that can be that is hard to classify as the part of the specific discipline and can also be implemented in STEM education. Um, now. I'm sure that we all did that and uh, normal and creative educational process from the perspective of the teacher always includes parts of those things. It doesn't, regardless of the topic of the, that we are teaching, should it be a geography or history or math or physics or biology, at some point in our classroom, we are going to ask our students to draw something or we are going to ask our students to play a, a, a game with us. Uh, or anything else that we can pick up. But STEAM education makes it on a more, uh, more systemized uh, level. It makes it the part of the whole education, the part of curriculum, so to say. And with another example, how it happens, there is this Michigan Architectural Foundation, which uh, basically is a school um, well, basically, they, they are school and they also have some extracurricular classes for young architects. Um, and they have developed their own curriculum in order to prepare the students from the kindergarten level uh, to, to acquire, to get necessary skills for them to be prepared for their future challenges like young architectures. Uh, as you can see, it was developed by American Institute of Architects in Michigan. And this is the first thing that we face when it comes to STEM education. Uh, this is like an absolute manifestation of STEM education. For example, we are preparing architects or we are preparing engineers or uh, programmers, whoever. Uh, so we are going to build the whole school and create the whole curricul curriculum around this purpose. But uh, this is the general idea. So the first thing we, we think we might think, this is a bit wide, one, one sided. Are those students going to have necessary skills like the whole the wide range of uh, topics covered in school program for them to be uh, well educated people? People we don't know. But this is what actually STEAM education is about finding the necessary balance between the traditional academic knowledge and the usage of technology. 
Your classroom can have as many robots as you want. It can have as many software, as much software as you want. And the, if students are going to be focusing only on using the technology without the academical value behind it, it's not going to be right or the other way around. Nowadays, if we are going to focus on just normal general, well, no, this is not the right word, but general academic knowledge without with ignoring the usage of technology in the classroom, that's not going to help them in the future since education has changed. Labor market has changed also. We are producing more and more technology. We need specialists to maintain this technology in the future. And even people who are not going to work in, the, in this field should have the necessary skills in order to fulfill their career ambition. Um, so pure academic knowledge is not going to give them that. Um, and that's what STEAM education is about from one, from one of the perspectives. Finding this right balance, implement the technology in the normal classes. And that's actually what we are trying to do in, uh, here at Spear. Trying to implement technology in not only future you know, science classes, IT classes, technology and design classes, but also in everyday normal life. Making the technology the part of our life without putting too much emphasis into it. So educational value in the classroom is still the most important thing. If we are, if we are having a geography lesson, and our goal is to show students uh, the cycle of Earth rotation. That's what we should focus on, not on the way how we implement it. At the same time, you, the usage of technology during implementation of this topic will make it much more diverse, will make it much more effective from the perspective of modern needs of education. Um, but the goal is to use the technology in all the lessons, in all the subjects. Is it already possible? I cannot say it is. There are still subjects that should, that, well, maybe should not, don't use technology as much as they should, I would say. It's a very controversial, hard topic as well, because it's also highly dependent on uh, social background or the specific, specific region that we might uh, speak of. But still, technology in the curriculum of every day uh, life of the, of the school is important. That's, that's for sure. So let's get back to Michigan Architectural Foundation. This, this is the parts of the, of the exercises and the parts of the curriculum from this uh, specific school. Uh, you, this is actually kindergarten lesson one. So you can see a very simple exercise. So the students are getting acquainted to geometrical solid figures. Uh, they get, well, the traditional explanation of the topic. They can see the circle, they can see the square, the triangle, rectangle. And they also can see its implementation in the architectural structures. So, and in the, fir the first pic picture, we can see some semicircles and the last one, rectangles. And a very simple combination of two different, um, not techniques, or two different kinds of materials, types of materials. So, the first one is just purely academic, where the students know about a square, how the square looks like, the triangle looks like. The second one, subconsciously, they already are getting acquainted with all the usage of these kind of shapes in the modern structures. What, let's get back to the topic of combination of these two things. So uh, in this case, not technology, but a very specific scientific concept and traditional academic knowledge. Uh, do they know general information about ge ge geometrical solid shapes? Yes, they do. Do they see how it can be used in architecture? Yes, they also do. And these are for students, for kids, starting from five, six, seven years old. Now let's go to the next one. Another example, same school, same curriculum, uh, fifth grade and lesson eight. So uh, well, it's a pity that we cannot discuss it because I would really like to ask your opinion on what do you think this is and what kind of exercise this is and how can we use it. Um, you can try to guess it yourself, but I think it's quite obvious what we can see here. So the first one, the picture uh, with, the, with the map, well, basically shows us the map of the landscape, right? Uh, could be used during the geography lesson. Could be used also during other lessons, uh, in other subjects. Uh, the task is very simple to build. Let's say the most beautiful and the, the, the most uh, practical and beautiful city in the world. And the students need to find a place and uh, design it using this specific map. Starting maybe from coloring it, but we will discuss some ways how to implement practical things a bit later. 
Uh, on the left, the picture on the left, we can see different characters, seal and some piece of writing. So uh, I think you might have guessed already that the picture on the left uh, shows us the participants of the theatrical play, and the picture on the right uh, serves as a decoration for the future play. So what kind of what kind of artistic um, um, technique could be used there? By the students, what kind of skills, what kind of creative skills should they use? It's storytelling, storytelling skills, and also um, the scientific topic that they need to cover. So here we have another combination. Are they going to practice their uh, storytelling skills? Yes, they will. Are they going to? Uh, are they going to acquire necessary information about? Um, where the city should be uh, near the river, across the river, around the river, what kind of landscape should be there? Are they going to color this picture together, developing their fine art skills? Yes, they will. All sorts of combination of techniques can be implemented here. And after that, I'm pretty sure if it doesn't matter what subject you have, but if you told your students that we're going to have a, a, a theatrical play soon, let's choose ourselves roles. Everyone would just raise their heads and I want to be a king, I want to be a and, you know, a mayor or to be a trader, whoever. So you could even you could have even more of those uh, more of those roles uh, in your classroom, and it will be one hundred percent. I'm sure I'm sure that you agree with me. It will be a very fun activity to do from the first minute to the last. And the last minute will be, of course, this uh, extra curriculum activity with the parents and students to actually role play it in a theater, something like. That. They, so what are students uh, practicing here? Storytelling skills, check. Um, uh, creative skills like coloring, coloring and drawing, they could even draw this specific land themselves, check. Uh, necessary architectural concepts about building the city, where it should build and all other specific. Unfortunately, I'm not a specialist in architecture, so I don't know what they should uh, learn there, but pretty much sure it's about the landscape, the types of the landscape, and it's uh, um, and how good it is for building a city on it. Is it there? It is there. And we can add more and more things to this list. We can add more things depending on the teacher's creativity, on the student's creativity. And that's um, a perfect, that's a very good um, example of STEAM educational concept. So first of all, a very specialized curriculum, which uh, includes a very specific goal. And the school is aimed on uh, on preparing architects in the future, and they're going to do that. But they are also including traditional academic knowledge. So these people who might not even choose this career path in the future will be ready to choose something else. They will have all the necessary all the necessary academic knowledge they need to proceed with their education as they see fit. But at the same time, they have higher chance, and they have uh, and they are. Were very, uh, they're prepared in a perfect way to follow the career of architecture. Using technology with these kinds of lessons would also be a great asset to it. So, uh, going back to the question, would it be one sided? Would it be one sided to have this kind of very specialized curriculum to focus all to only on this kind of educational materials? So let's imagine that we have a normal school, but for each and every subject of our school, or maybe not each, like 75% of the subjects in our school should include this kind of blend, this kind of combination of educational materials. Would it be one-sided? I'm sure that our opinions would be divided because what we see here, these uh, these uh, exercises, these lesson plans, it's not a common practice in the United States and anywhere else. It, was, it has started like an experiment, but I'm sure that there are more and more schools that are doing the same thing, maybe not on that you know, on this kind of wide scale, but definitely more and more educational establishments are trying to uh, to do the same thing. I would say that it's not going to be one sided, but it also is heavily dependent on the curriculum. If the um, if the if the educational materials uh, are to blend those things, which are very specific topics and traditional topics together so that each of the parts will be uh, balanced, will be balanced, so to say, I think this is perfect. This is what we all should aim for. At the same time, it's a very ris risky thing. Mm, this balance in one side or another might harm the whole educational process in general. So 
it is heavily dependent on highly qualified, uh, highly qualified people to create this kind of curriculum and then implement it in the classroom. If you, if you have a minute, if you would like to, please think about this. I would love to discuss it with you. Do you think this kind of curriculum is a one-sided practice, or should we also try to implement it in our regular, regular schools in our, uh, in our everyday life? Now, what can be? Uh, this is these are points of contact that we are trying to implement in Spira, for example. We're trying to do the same thing, well, but maybe not in the scale of the whole curriculum, but at the scale of for one subject. In this case, manual arts and technical drawing. Um, in terms of manual, manual arts and technical drawing, I mean 3D modeling and uh, special software for uh, these kind of purposes. So, what kind of crossover potential does it have? And this is also another thing we could discuss later on. If you think, maybe if you might think of any implementation of 3D modeling in everyday school life, I mean subjects like biology, chemistry, that would be great. Well, one of the easiest answers, I would say, and I'm pretty sure that there are people here who actually use 3D printers in their teaching practice, 3D printing, 3D modeling. So whatever you are teaching, let's say physics, chemistry, biology, you can create a 3D model of something, print it with your students, and use it for demonstration in the classroom. This is also quite a one-sided approach, but still, demonstrational concept is very important for STEM. So if you have a very simple experiment, we need to show it. If, if we are showing the concept of violence of an orange, let's show it in the classroom. Everything that we can show, we should show so the students could experience it on themselves. So they could experience the science in the classroom and see that they can actually create it. So from this perspective, 3D modeling and uh, technical drawing could be the great manifestation of this demonstrational concept. We can demonstrate all kinds of things with it. At the same time, there are, we are facing some challenges. First of all, it might be challenging to use this software. The students they require additional additional preparation to use the software, and not all subjects can implement this kind of things uh, there. It also is heavily dependent on the motivation of the teacher. Not all teachers accept this kind of demonstrational concept, and they have full right to do that. But still, uh, it, it depends on the final conductor of the knowledge in the classroom, which is the teacher. But again, what subjects can we use the technical drawing for? apart from IT and computer science. As I, as I said already, physics for sure, biology, chemistry, and all other things to include different models. Uh, we can also think about uh, points of contact in different subjects later on. I would be glad to hear your thoughts about it. Uh, but again, it, let's not speak about the implementation of it in the classroom, but like general idea. Uh, can we consider technical drawing to be a branch of the fine arts? And this is another thing. Because everyone who is in, who is somehow connected with 3D modeling, 3D software, uh, is using his or her own creativity in a traditional way. We're creating models, we're using our skills, but at the same time, for to create images, and models, but at the same time, we're using technology. And uh, might be controversial. Someone might say it's not fine arts. It's a te more technological, more technological aspect of art, or maybe just technology in general not connected with art itself. I think it still is because art is about expressing creativity and the way we express this creativity defines, it's, uh, defines it actually. So if we take STEM education where we have a very, very strict framework and in this framework we're supposed to show our creativity, you have the materials, you have the final goal, you have the experiment, try to think of the way how this experiment might work, how this uh, scientific concept might work. And this is, a, this is creativity, but in pure technological form. When it comes to artistic creativity, it has a completely different approach. Using our skills, manual skills, uh, skills in fine art, just to create something not specifically connected to the scientific topic, using a different set of skills, including such skills, the communication skills, problem solving skills. So this is what STEAM education is more all about. Making the framework of creativity wider and using more and more techniques um, of classic art, of classic approach to education uh, with the technology, combined with the technology. Now, another example, 
animal spoons, for example, using any kind of construction set. Doesn't matter who produces it. Doesn't matter what kind of construction set you have. Let's try to think about the way how we could implement it using STEM and STEAM or just traditional uh, education. So what would what would we do if it, if it, we had a, we had a, our a our aim was to create a STEM exercise. We have a construction set. Uh, we have construction set. We have a set of animals that we need to build. The students get uh, the instruction on how to do it. They practice their they improve their menu skills by actually engineering. Let's, let's say it's proto engineering, basic engineering, creating this model. After that, each and every student with the instruction of this um, of this specific animal they got before. So someone is building a cat, someone is building a dog. They have it, they have the model, they have followed the instruction. After that, they get, uh, let's say, biological information about it. cats, dogs, whatever, it's biology lesson, right? And after that, they note it down, note it down, and the exercise is complete. And that's it. What, what, did we, what did we actually achieve here? So the first one, manual skill, did we improve those? Yes, we have. Do they have the skills on how to build things or maybe even uh, think on how to improve the construction of the ready-made model? Yes, they did using a construction set. Did they also give? Did they also get the traditional um, scientific concept about cats, dogs, whatever biological topic we have there? Yes, they also did. Is there is a Is there a balance between technology and uh, academic knowledge? Perfect balance, 50-50. Demonstrational purpose, demonstrational concept is preserved. Everything should be. Uh, everything should be great. Uh, now this is STEM education. We have framework, we have creativity, go for it. We have this construction set, we need to do a couple of books uh, to do it. What about STEAM education? How can we how can we use see how can we use computer aided design and generally STEAM uh, techniques to make this exercise? Let's not give those students instructions. That's the first thing. Let them choose their own animals. The second thing. And what is most important, let them work in groups and assign different roles to it. This is, I repeat this kind of thing every time when I think about STEAM. So group work and communication skills are the most important thing there. Let's divide those students in groups, assign different roles, uh, ask one student to be, a, to be a concept artist and build a prototype, or draw a prototype of the, of the model of the animal that we are going to build. Another, another couple of students are going to be building team who actually build the build it together. The uh, the second uh, group of students will be a scientific scientific researcher group who are going to uh, find all the information about these animals. When we have extra extracurricular classes, we can ask students to create some animals that do not exist, mythological animals, or whatever they would like to um, to build. But that's after the lessons. During the lesson, let's broaden those uh, borders of creativity and give them more freedom to do that. And after that, when each and every uh, model will be ready, of course, with the assistance of the teacher, of course, uh, this process it should not, it's, it might sound a bit, a bit chaotic, but it's not. Of course, it should be supervised by the teacher and the roles should be blended. All the students in the group should work properly on one specific goal, but still giving those couple of um, couple of um, aspects of freedom for them is very important. They are going to have problem solving skills. They have the goal and they need to um, find the solution for it together. They are going to uh, improve their communication skills. At the same time, they're going to use the technology and at the same time, they're going to get the uh, academic knowledge about the biological concept that they actually need uh, had to uh, cover. So this is the difference again between STEM lesson and STEAM lesson. And how can we actually use computer aided design? Well, the answer is very simple. Before actually building it with construction set, we can use a specific software to build a prototype of line, divide students in groups, ask them to build this model first during, using the software and then using uh, the, construction, the construction set itself. Because building a prototype is as important as actually uh, building the model itself.
because every scientific project starts with a prototype and very often, unfortunately, teachers uh, underestimate the importance of the preparation for it. The same as it goes with any STEM experiment. We have a very simple experiment, right? Like when, for which we need some specific materials, like let's say a couple of apples, a glass of water, and a book. Just three random items that just came to my mind. Someone has to find them. Someone has to prepare them. So what would most teachers do is just to bring them in the classroom. I would go with a different thing and ask students to prepare it themselves because every scientific problem starts not with the actual research, but for the preparation for the research. And again, let's divide those students in groups. Let's ask them to find those couple of apples, to find this vessel of water and the one specific book. And they will do it. They will work together to do it. They will solve their first, let's say, scientific problem. But, you know, of course, it's not scientific, but it's connected with the whole educational process. And this way, preparing them for the future challenges, not only not only for the research skills uh, activities, research activities, but also for a very, a very normal thing that they're going to face. So this is, of course, has a very, very functional connection to STEAM education, but still, this, this is somehow, uh, this is something that some teachers also do. Uh, so when it comes to STEM and STEAM, and when it comes to this big letter, important letter A, this is what's this all about, just making this framework larger, making this space for students freedom uh, bigger and giving them more opportunities to show their creativity, how, how they see fit. Um, someone would say it's making your classroom a playground, but this is not it. Playground is a different thing. We, of course, need to supervise this pro process. We, of course, need to guide them through this process and, uh, let's say, control it in a soft way. But again, giving freedom and using creative techniques of of other subjects is very, very important. So uh, as a conclusion, how to implement STEAM in your classroom, how to make it creative, how to make it more effective, be flexible, that's very important, and I think that's quite obvious. Uh, flex flex the flexibility of the materials itself is the basic of the whole student education, right? So the teachers should be flexible as well. They need to be open for new things. They need to, they need to have the motiva motivation to do it. Unfortunately, my personal experience also shows that this is one of the biggest problems. Sometimes teachers just do not have motivation uh, to, uh, to implement something new um, for different various reasons. And there is, there is no way we can judge whoever or whatever but still sometimes it happens and uh, this is also what steam education is about it's trying to help it's trying to show teachers that it's trying to make their lives easier not more complicated and that's why the personal desire to be flexible will open more opportunities uh keep an open mind i, I think we can we can also add this onto the previous said uh, be ready to help and ask for help because it's hard to be new and all different teachers have different uh, levels of experience with these techniques. So, of course, exchanging experience and uh, ideas is very important uh, for everyone and let students sleep. And I think this can be also uh, implemented in that statement uh, about broadening the, the, the borders of creativity, since uh, giving students more freedom will give them more ways to express their creativity and which will create your STEM, which will transform your STEM uh, lesson into STEAM uh, lesson. And that's also very, very important. Um, and I think this is it from my side and I hope that it was helpful for you. And now if you have any questions or maybe you would like to discuss something uh, with me, I would be happy and glad to do that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Victor. That was uh, very interesting. For the uh, questions, we actually have a question from the chat uh, asking, how do you think English, uh, how do you think uh, English subject can be taught and integrated into a STEM plan? Uh, OK, uh, <clears throat> this is not the first time I hear this uh, question, of course. And uh, we are trying, we at Creeber and uh, other educators are trying to implement STEAM and STEM uh, educational uh, techniques in linguistics as well. It, unfortunately, now it's uh, highly dependent on the hardware that you have. 
So the tools that you actually have, the technology that you use in the classroom. When I say technology, I don't mean iPads, or laptops, or whatever. But let's say a programmable robot, let's say a construction set or something else. Let's say a 3D printer as well. So uh, one of the ways, for example, if the teacher the teaching English as a second language, we have a we have a new vocabulary that we need to introduce to students. Let's say something simple, like some simple word, cat. We can uh, using CAD, we can model the letters with our students like C A mm, cat C T, and then we can print them out, and then we can distribute it uh, in the let's say interactive playground, and then we can remotely control the robot or use the robot to uh, you know to uh, put the to put the letters in the correct order, and in this way they will be the word, and 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 at the same time they are going to use the robot and three D printer to prepare for the lessons and during the lesson. Might might be uh, that the first glance might be a bit overcomplicated for just a simple word cat. But this is the first thing that we think about when we talk about STEM using technology and linguistics, uh, basically operating with hardware during our lessons. We actually all teachers of uh, not only English, linguistics, they do that all the time. They do use tools uh, for um, learning new skills like um, audio materials, video materials, iPad, laptops, and so on. But students do not take actual uh, part in, you know, in using the technology. Everyone knows how to use laptop. When it comes to a more specialized tools, I think this is the answer. Acquiring for now, acquiring more uh, specialized tools and combining skills like programming with linguistic uh, with linguistic topics. Learning new vocabulary with programmable robot, for example, or uh, learning new grammatical structure with the interactive board, something like that. Asking students to technologically manifest what they actually learned in the classroom. Thank you, Victor. Um, another question. Um, teachers, uh, imp while implementing STEAM education programs, they can face uh, um, a lot of challenges. Um, what are some of these challenges and how can they overcome these uh, challenges facing these new um, uh, solutions in, in the classroom? Uh, <clears throat> well, basically, uh, very often when the school requires, uh, not requires, it gets new equipment, for example, a new construction set or a 3D printer. The first question is, what am I supposed to do with that? So uh, many, many teachers did not have experience with using any kind of technology during their lessons uh, before that. And that's one of the main problems, I suppose, the lack of experience and also the lack of content for the tools. So uh, when the school requires 3D printer, very often the teachers just, uh, they are left with it and they are there to explore it themselves. They don't have the support, they don't have, so they need to do everything themselves. We make research themselves, look for it themselves. And that's, uh, that's one of the main problems, I suppose, the accessibility of the tools in terms of the content. Because a lot of schools uh, have different tools, like robots, with printers and everything. Uh, else, but they do lack content and teacher training. So, um, it, as I said before, since we have this problem of the lack of the teacher training, it's very often um, the answer is the motivation of the teacher. If someone wants to learn something new, he or she will do it herself or himself. There is no support, and this is the the, the most uh, important thing. Of course, it's very generalized. It's changing now, nowadays, and a lot of governmental programs are focused for the training for, for the teachers to give them additional training, give them additional content and support. But it's changing not that fast because we need results fast, but we don't have the means to do it that fast. And we are waiting for it to transform fully, but uh, we are still lacking uh, some basic things like preparation of the teacher and the content for the new uh, tools. Thank you. Um, one last question, um, and this is uh, very general. How do you envision the future of STEAM education? Mm, well, I hope it's going to be bright and uh, it's going to be great. And I hope 
that this kind of uh, exercises and activities that we have uh, seen before, like in Michigan uh, Architecture Foundation School, uh, they will happen more often. So uh, I would personally would like to see more specialized curriculum like that. I would like to see, and I hope it's going to happen, that STEAM education will broaden the, uh, the borders of uh, traditional curriculum and enhance it with technology so that our society could have uh, a more technological approach in every sphere of life, not only in a specific technological sphere like we have it now. So I see the STEAM education educational future as a very, very generalized in a, in a very good way. I mean, it, it will be probably in every school and it probably will be even more and more effective since we are going to create more and more amazing tools to influence our education. So I see it as a great as a great possibility to combine something new with something conventional. Thank you so much, Victor. Um, and um, actually, one last question, uh, career related. So, um, what would be the the skills of the future uh, related to the STEAM field? How can students um, approach the the job market? Well, uh, basically, it well we we can we can be very specific about this answer or very, or very generalized. And I think the generalized answer will be better because uh, we create more and more tools, but we do not have enough people to maintain them. Let's say, for example. Uh, Let's say, for example, AI, right, which is very, which is a hot topic uh, nowadays. It has been created already. We know it is created. We know it's there. And now we don't know how to use it. I mean, we know how to use it, but we are now, we are lacking the people with ideas how to practically use it in some specific sphere. For example, I know it's the in sphere, uh, engineering, how to use AI in engineering or how to use AI in, uh, in graphic design. This is actually quite an easy answer we can just ask ai to generate an image for us but is it going to be a is it going to be a, a piece of art is it going to be a, a specific uh, engineering prototype that ai will create so this is it we don't we are lacking the people who can maintain uh, what we have created so whatever skills they're using whatever career paths they are using it's going to be about enhancing what we already have. Is it going to be, if, if it's programming, it's going to be programming on an extremely high level. If it's going to be a, if it's going to be 3D design and so on, it's going to be also on really high level. So basically it's going to be the same, but very much improved and very much uh, enhanced. And, that, and that's actually for the people who are going to take those career paths. It's up to them how to improve them and how to transform them and enhance them and make them look different how to make AI engineer and AI ethicist, for example, uh, to, to do uh, how to train a person who will distinguish these ethic um, problems of using AI in different spheres of our life, for example, something like that. Uh, so yeah, basically, basically this is it. Thank you, thank you very much. So before saying uh, goodbye to Victor and all the participants, uh, let me just remind you a couple of things. Uh, the STEM Discovery Campaign 2023 is still ongoing. So uh, stay tuned for our upcoming activities and check out the STEM Alliance webpage uh, and join our uh, uh, competitions. Um, then if you haven't seen the latest episode of Scientix TV, you can find the link in the chat. It is about uh, 20 minutes filled with uh, interviews, discussions, presentations, and homemade experiments. Um, so uh, finally, uh, Victor, it was a pleasure being with you, uh, being your host tonight, and many thanks for your contribution. Thank you all for participating and uh, goodbye. See you at the next webinar. <laughs>